Hello everyone! First video in the new place other than the moving vlog. I hope you enjoyed my moving vlog which was the previous video that I uploaded on my channel. Today I'm going to talk about a couple of games and I'm gonna tell you about uh, something for your Switch. So this video is random. Super random. I hope you will enjoy it. And if you do, please hit like on it and subscribe if you are new. Okay, so I am going to actually be very honest with you. I have not had the time to play a lot of games after we moved here because I've had a lot of work to do, a lot of work, a lot of editing jobs, a lot of everything, you know. I don't really have much time left to play games right now. I guess it's just adult life happening or something. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate. Sometimes in life, there's just not enough hours in the day to fit in a game session even. Play games, because that is normally something you do when you have done your work, done everything else that needs to be done, I don't know. But I'm just looking so much forward to having some time for myself to play some games soon, because I'm going nuts, I'm really like craving video games. Because it's been some weeks or months since last time that I can remember that I really had a good 8 hour session with a game. Which is something that we all need sometimes, you know, to de-stress. But I have to say that while I have been very busy, I have naturally gone back to some older games. I feel like I always say that. <laughs> always go back to older games. I bought, again, that is another thing. I often rebuy games that I already have. Why do I do that? I try not to do that. But... Uh, I bought again Assassin's Creed Origins on the Xbox One X that I have over at my mom and Katz's place. So I have started again Assassin's Creed Origins. It has been a world that I have dearly missed. It's like going back to an old neighborhood that I have truly missed being in. If you didn't know and if you didn't watch that video. I said that in 2020, like the game of the year, that was a game that was not released within that year, game of the year for me anyway, was Assassin's Creed Origins. Yes, I love that game so much. And the other game that won game of the year, which was actually released, wasn't like Genshin Impact. My hair is so long, it's ridiculous. But it's like... It's like meeting an old friend and I've been missing Egypt so goddamn much. And I don't know if this is weird or not, it's probably more super weird. But I think I am like a reincarnation of an Egypt person. I think I've been an Egyptian in my previous life or something. Uh, just loving the game, just loving it so much. It's so cozy, so good. It's like Breath of the Wild good. Yeah, I actually made a video where I said that. <laughs> Check out that if you wanna hear more about Assassin's Creed Origins, but that is just something that I have, you know, naturally went back to. So that is quite interesting. I still highly recommend that game, obviously, like from the bottom of my heart. Like truly, it's like a super big recommendation for me. And it's always on sale. I don't know why, but it's like always on sale. I recommend Egypt for you. Check it out. Now let's talk some Switch games. Mm -hmm. And this section of the video is sponsored by Fixture Gaming. They sent to me this device, but I told them that I wanted to check it out first. And so I did, and I love it. It is called the Fixture S1. This is how I've been exclusively playing the Switch. Since I got the device, I haven't detached it at all, but it's easy to do. I mean, you just grab your Switch like this, and you slide it off. So with your Switch you just detach your Joy-Cons, which probably has a Joy-Con drift in it already, and then you attach your Switch to this device, like so. And also you have the Pro Controller, probably. I have recommended the Pro Controller a thousand times. You put that onto the device, like so, and you can adjust everything, like up, down, 
this is how I play. So I have a code for you. Use my code. And I highly recommend this thing. It's all I ever use right now. So my code is Isha, I-R-C-H-A, and you can go to the link below or the link in the top comment and get yours. Fixture S1. And it also has like a case where you can just put down your switch, do it like this and like this. <laughs> Not like that. And then close the lid. I love it. It's my go-to switch method of playing right now. Highly recommend this thing. And a lot of other YouTubers have also recommended this. And you have probably seen it already and they are all correct. It is a good device. Thank you so much for sponsoring this section of the video. Now let's talk about some switch games. So I have two new games that has dropped on the Switch that uh, I often get questions about like in the comment section and in DMs on Instagram. You should follow my Instagram if you want to, you know, DM me properly. But I made some notes of them and I also got these uh, two games as review codes and I made notes in my new notebook. Okay, so we the first game. Oh my god, it's chosen. Okay, whatever. The first game, it is called Poison Control. So. It has obviously a art style that I like, anime style. But Poison Control is an action shooter, a brand new game by Nippon Ishii Software. It's now out on Nintendo Switch and PS4. And it is by the same people behind Penny Punching Princess and The Princess Guide, which are two games that I've only heard about but never played. You play as a person who has to purify hell, basically. And it has a very cute art style and satisfying color palette. It is definitely what drew me to this game in the first place. But it feels to me like a mid-range uh, budget title. And all the areas, they are quite simple. And the gameplay is that you control your character in third-person mode. So it has a lot of third-person shooting action. And you also have to purify the ground, where the ground is messy. The dialogues are for the most part light-hearted and playful. And the music is good. However, in this game I miss jumping. And there's no gyro controls which is something that I require when I play a uh, shooting game on my Switch, I guess. I guess I do. And I'm also missing some sort of melee option, because there's none. <clears throat> and you run out of ammo on your gun a lot. Art style and menus, they look fabulous. And there is an overworld map where you can see all the missions and then enter them. That is basically like the structure of the gameplay. And there are also like cutscenes and talking and stuff. And then you go through these mini dungeons where you shoot in third person and purify the ground and, you know, kill the enemies. And then you progress to the next sort of level. You're then thrown back to the overworld map and you're on to the next mission. That is the gameplay loop of Poison Control. It's cute, yes. But I was not hooked. Uh, I was not feeling it. It's a cute game though, I should probably give it more of a chance. Some dialogue gives you certain options to level up within certain stats, so that is also something, I guess. My final verdict of Poison Control is that it just didn't hook me. And you can make up your own opinion from that. So the last game that I also got is a review code and I have played it a tiny bit because I actually I asked for this review code because I thought I would like it. Dayland. It looks like my type of game. A lot of people in comment section have said, this looks like your type of game, Isha. <laughs> and I'm like, yes it does. But there is a big problem with this game and that is, oh well, basically, it is made by the people that made Summer in Mara. And a lot of the things that I complained about in Summer in Mara they are found in this game too, I feel like. It's a single player adventure game, apparently from 2016, with the elements of collecting things, crafting and building. And these are elements in games that I love. It is out on Nintendo Switch, PS4, PC, Android and iOS. This game is actually also set in the same universe as Summer in Mara. So you may actually meet some familiar NPCs, maybe. I can see a lot of striking similarities to Mara in Dayland, like art style and menus. It's quite obvious, you know, that they are related. It does have some combat too, actually. The gameplay consists of doing tasks like build a fireplace, like upgrade your kitchen, plant this and plant that. And when you level up, you can choose between some upgrades you want to focus on. Control wise it is similar to that of Summer in Mara and you have to eat to prevent hunger. 
hate when that happens. And you have to collect a lot of resources to build and expand your house and farm. There are seasons also, but I don't think I will play this game much. I'm pretty sure actually that I will not play it anymore. I've just made up my mind that I don't like the game uh, and I'm very sorry that I don't like the game. It's kind of hard to explain why I don't like a game because usually here on Isha Gaming I always talk about games that I do like and I find uh, explaining why I like a game much easier than explaining why I don't like a game, if that makes sense. So that is what's happening with uh, Dayland, I feel like. But let me know if I'm wrong on this. Give it to me in the comment section. Okay, this video is now probably longer than I uh, planned it to be. Thank you so much for watching and I will be back really soon with a super cool video. And uh, I hope you want to stick around for that because it's gonna be fun, I guess. I don't know. I'm hyping that up way more than I should have. Never mind. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later.